Good morning everyone, today I am in Kanazawa which is in Ishikawa prefecture and I am going to be doing one day of sightseeing. I'm going to go to all the best spots because this town is known for its like Edo preserved atmosphere. So they have the castle, they have a beautiful Japanese garden as well as like samurai districts. Today we're starting in Higashichaya which as you can see are these beautiful wooden like buildings because this used to be a geisha district and you might be thinking isn't that Kyoto? Well it's similar to it because it's even got the name Little Kyoto. So I'm gonna start my day here. It's very bright and early. There's no one else around so I've got the place to myself. Kanazawa has three main districts for tea house areas and this is the biggest one. So Higashi means east and Chaya means tea houses. So if you do come here and you want to see a geisha performance, you actually can. They have special wooden Chaya buildings where you can see the geisha perform. Nowadays this area, although it's not really an entertainment district anymore because that's Edo period time, it is popular for its street food and every shop kind of opens around 10 a.m. and there's gonna be so many people packing into this area. Cause last time I came here, I literally couldn't walk down the street without uh, about a hundred other people. <laughs> and Kanazawa is the biggest producer of gold leaf in the entire country. It is literally everywhere. You can find gold leaf takoyaki, ice cream, meat, <laughs> everything you can think of, they put some gold leaf on it. And I'm definitely keen to have some sort of gold leaf. My first street food, I went with a gold ice cream. There are little flakes of gold on here. Let's give it a go. I can taste like the flavor of the vanilla ice cream and I feel like I can taste the gold. I can't tell <laughs> if it has a flavor. And I don't even know what flavor the ice cream is. There's like an orange or oh, pink orange flavor at the back, but it's definitely vanilla at the front and it's melting so fast, oh my goodness. If you're wondering how much this costs, with the gold it was 700 yen and without it was about 500, so they're definitely charging you for the gold. But it's worth it because I'm only going to be here like once or twice, so definitely give it a go and I'm going to look for a bit more gold food, but I'll finish this in the meantime. This shop behind me is called Sakura and they're one of the main gold leaf producers here in Kanazawa. I'm going to do a bit of shopping inside there. They also have a gold toilet bathroom, so something to look forward to. You can find any kind of souvenir here covered in gold, but I loved using this gold themed bathroom. I'm thinking to get myself a souvenir, so get the edible gold leaf, because when I make a hot drink at home, I can put it in. So even though it's a bit expensive, YOLO. Right here behind me is the main town district of the Higashichaya area. Honestly, just a moment ago, there was literally nobody here, but then a group of Japanese school kids arrived. But honestly, people are moving fast, so probably empty out again. Parallel from Higashichaya district is Asano River, and it's a very beautiful, calm area, and I recommend checking it out. It reminds me of Kamogawa in Kyoto. There's just something about this city that makes you want to stay here longer. The locals are so nice as well. <laughs> Kanazawa actually has one of the biggest cafe cultures in the country, in my opinion anyway. And I found a really cute machia style cafe right next to Higashichaya. And it's themed on like cats, black cats. It's called Cafe Kuroneko and it is adorable. There's like this tatami room where you've got like a Japanese garden, an engawa. They have beautiful couches you can sit on and the atmosphere is my kind of vibe. But Tokyo doesn't have a lot of these, so I am super happy to be here. And even the water I was served with had this cute little cat cup. Literally on the first page, there's this cat omelet, which I have to get, as well as matcha latte. And I'm a big matcha fan. It also has a cat face on it. So I'm really excited. Taking a look around the cafe and they had a hidden room that was full of cat books. It's actually incredible. And there's all these little cats on the table. It's so adorable. I love this place. And I've got it to myself. There's literally no one here. Okay, my cat omelette ice is here. Itadakimasu. And he drew a little cute cat face on there for me. <laughs> mm. Omelette ice, Japanese curry. They're very typical in these kind of cafes. And they're kind of homey and they just feel really comforting, so I really enjoy this. If you've never had omelette rice before, it's basically rice with ketchup, so tomato sauce, some onion, maybe some vegetables like peas, and then there's like an omelette on top. And then if you've ever seen like an anime, they'll put like a message on it, like obviously it's cat themed, so there's a little cat on there. My 
my matcha latte is here and there's a really cute little cat on the top I don't know how he did that I guess I guess he got the milk foam and then designed it so every time you come here you're gonna get a different cat design A little bit of light rain but it's not stopping me from enjoying my day out here in Kanazawa. I recommend walking from spot to spot in Kanazawa because most of it is within walking distance like 15 to 20 minutes but if it is a good sunny day get yourself a rental bike like this one behind me because they're very like budget friendly and the city is honestly a great way to discover by cycling around it's similar to Kyoto in that and if it wasn't raining I would get on that bike. I've got the whole beautiful area to myself. <laughs> wow, so, so stunning. This is Kanazawa Castle Park and it looks magnificent. Look at that green lawn. It looks beautiful. It might actually be one of my favorite castles in Japan. And it was owned by the Maeda clan who were very wealthy, but now it is just restored and open to tourists. And it's very rainy, oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me grab my umbrella. Today, not much of it actually remains because a lot of it was burnt down in natural disasters. But you can come here in Rome, they often hold free events where you can enjoy, for example, Team Lab. They're holding something now like a light up. And then in the autumn, they have a light up as well as like a lantern festival, which is really fun. And my goodness, it is raining. There are still a lot of tourists out here because they want to enjoy this castle, no matter what the weather is. Pouring, it's pissing! Ah! I wanted to go around more, but it is pissing with rain, and everyone is taking refuge in this little like information resting booth. So that might be all I have to show you for Kanazawa Castle Park, unless the rain subsides soon. This little street on the way to the Japanese garden is actually called Edo Machi Avenue, so literally Edo era themed street, and I can tell why they named it this because all the shops are very Edo themed and it's very beautiful, the trees, the nature, I like it. I ended up deciding to come into one of the cafes that I spotted from down below to take shelter from the rain and I have no regrets. I ordered myself a local hojicha which is a roasted green tea and it's famous in this area. They don't seem to have it anywhere else. This cup is just so beautiful. Kanazawa is famous for its like crafts. I can see the castle in the distance. It's very cozy. They've got sofa couches and the view is great. I think it's important to be realistic because when you're traveling in Japan it might not always be the best weather but even if it's raining you can totally do these activities and there are lots of other people in the same situation so you've only got one day gonna go and do it. I believe in you. Welcome to Kennokoen Garden. This is said to be one of Japan's most beautiful gardens and it's because it actually embodies six different characteristics which is in the name. Ken Nokuen. Waterfalls, stone lanterns, bridges, tea houses. This place is really popular every season. It's most famous in the autumn because the leaves turn red but in the winter which I haven't visited yet there's snow the snow falls and it kind of sticks onto the trees and they've got this kind of unique um, wooden uh, like sticks that hold it up and kind of protect the pine trees from any damage from the heavy snowfall. Entry isn't too expensive, it's only 320 yen and I think it's totally worth it to visit one of the best gardens in the country. It's got everything, you don't need to even go to other ones because it's got all six characteristics. <laughs> These pine trees are a characteristic of the garden and they're absolutely beautiful. I see them a lot in the ukiyo-e like paintings of Edo-era Japan and I think they're very symbolic for the Japanese people and up close you can just see how stunning they are. You don't get to see them quite often and they're well taken care of. I can see a lot of workers making sure that they're trimmed or protected and that's why during the winter they've got to make sure these survive because they're very culturally important. One of the major tea houses inside the garden is right behind me. It's called Shigurete and you can have a matcha as well as wagashi and enjoy the garden and the tatami Japanese room. So I'm going to give that a go because I did that last time I was here but at another tea house. So it seems like there's quite a few here. The waiting room to go inside a tea house now. I wonder how long it'll take. It's an interesting system that we can wait in the tatami room 
and <laughs> because of the um, humidity and the rain outside, the window is fogged up so we don't have a view. After waiting, you're taken to this tatami room next door where you'll be served your matcha and wagashi. And I expected to be able to view the garden while enjoying the snacks, but apparently it's afterwards. So it took about 20 minutes till I could see the view. So definitely come here with that in mind. I wasn't sure what was happening half the time, but on to the next spot. If you're a fan of Samurai, you have to come visit Nagamachi District because it's right in the center of Kanazawa and it's literally where the Samurai used to live. And they were not just any Samurai, they were the highly ranked ones. So it's really well preserved here and we can actually visit some of the houses that they used to live in as well as gardens. And they're open to the public. Some of them cost money and some of them are free. So I'm gonna take a look. This is one of my first few times walking around here because I didn't realize last time I came here that this area existed, so I'm very excited. This area also has lots of small side streets you can get lost down and it's kind of similar to the Higashichaya district but with less shops that are selling food and it's more restaurants and it's quieter. It's a lot more peaceful. At night time if you come here there's absolutely no one. Being a big fan of Naruto, I always came to Japan being like ninjas, but ever since like I've lived here and visited quite a few spots, samurai have been growing on me. And I feel like overseas ninjas are more popular, but in Japan, people like samurai. I actually came to a cafe here the other day and I had dinner nearby. And they have a really good pizza place, so I highly recommend that. It had like a marinara, margarita, and it was so tasty. Welcome to Oimicho Market. This is Kanazawa's most famous fish market and it is bustling with tourists and locals alike getting their hands on some local produce. They have tons of fresh fish as well as vegetables, fruit and there's also like souvenir shops so if you want to just buy some stuff you can definitely find it here. This market has actually been around since the Edo era so it's got a lot of history and it's like the cultural food hub for the Kanazawa city area. And I can see that like it is busy and this is a weekday. I'm surprised how many people there are. They've done a really good job to like keep all the shops like maintained and keep the culture alive. This restaurant behind me is selling seafood donburi and some of them are up to three to four thousand yen each. So that's a little pricey. And some of them are a bit fancier because they've got gold flakes on top. I actually recommend coming up on the second floor, which I didn't realize they had. You can get an overview of the market and you can see all the shops and how busy it is. It's a good viewing spot, honestly. It's really fun just seeing what's available because there's a lot of stuff that I can't find back home in Tokyo and I've seen some like fresh fruit and veggies that I was like what are these even? There are actually quite a few shops that have already closed so I'm assuming they open really early in the morning and people have already bought all the goods. This is the kind of market you can't come to too late in the evening. It's definitely a come before 4pm or even early in the morning like 8am. Right behind me is a fruit and veggie shop and I was really interested in some of the things they were selling because I hadn't seen them before. They had some interesting limes. One thing caught my eye which was this ruby roman grape which for one single grape like this <laughs> was 300 yen. I mean Japan is known for having expensive fruit but I've never seen like a single grape for sale. So I was like why not? It'll be fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this single grape a go and I have no idea what to expect, but it is made in Ishikawa Prefecture, which is where Kanazawa is located. So let's give it a try. So juicy. It almost tasted like red wine. Would I say it's worth 300 yen? Probably not, but it was fun to experience it. Um, definitely different to Australian grapes. <laughs> and also the texture was a lot smoother. Like the skin would kind of just like peel off and then you'd be chewing the inside on its own, rather than kind of being attached. Well, yeah, that was my grape analysis. <laughs> One other thing actually caught my eye at the fruit and veggie shop, which was this hot sweet potato, which is very popular in Japan during the autumn season, and it was only 200 yen, cheaper than my grapes, so let's give it a go. Mmm, this is, this is toaster. I really like this, it's not too mushy in the middle, a lot of the times during autumn you can find them like at places like Donkey, you can find it at supermarkets, but it'll be really hot and crispy on the outside, but the middle is just like mush. But this is really fun. I was talking to the owner of the veggie shop and he told me that Ishikawa is famous for its sweet potatoes, so this is a good thing to try. And um, their actual shop had 16 different varieties of sweet potato. That's a lot of sweet potato. <laughs> but I'm good with this one. 
here at the market area, there is one like souvenir um, gift shop right at the entrance and I highly recommend popping by because you can pick up this Kanada pudding which last time I visited my friend Emma got obsessed with and it, it's really good. I highly recommend it so let's give this a go. And it's in one of these cute little glasses and you've got to pour the caramel sauce on yourself. I haven't had one of these for one year. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is so creamy. I forgot just how good this pudding is. If you don't manage to come here, don't worry, you can go to the station at the 7-Eleven at Kanazawa Station before hopping back on the train, the Shinkansen. You can pick one of these up. One final spot I'd like to recommend is the Tori Gate at the Kanazawa Station. It is hard to miss because the moment you leave the station, it is right there. It's considered actually one of the most beautiful stations in Japan. And I can see why because it's just so beautiful. It looks like wood, but I believe it's glass and steel. And it was after they renovated that they built this. So Kanazawa is kind of known for its art. And I think that kind of represents that. Very popular for photos. So make sure to get a photo here when you start your Kanazawa journey me that's the end of my Kanazawa journey so I'm going to be heading back to Tokyo but thanks for watching and I'll see you in another Japan travel series bye